Hi guys, Ryu here with another bit for Blender and this one's going to be about Machine Tools Deus Ex which is a paid version of Machine Tools. If you're going to go to Machine's website on Gumroad to Blender Market and you want to get it, uh, be careful because uh, if you click on Standard and you know um, there is a suggested price here because you can get it for free but of course you can tip a Machine uh, with 350 plus um, you know, you're gonna get the standard version, but if you're gonna grab Deus Ex, it actually says here 350 as well. And if you uh, pay 350, you're gonna get still the standard version. So make sure that you're gonna type $10 plus, and so at least 10 bucks, and then you're gonna get the Deus Ex version, okay? Now, the difference between Deus Ex version and the standard version is that here, when I go to tools, uh, where is it? Machine tools, that's the one and go to general you will see that edge constraint uh, between smooth and customize uh, which is just simply additional option and that's the Deus X option by default you turn it on by pressing alt r in edit mode so let me show you how it works now i've noticed that my blender started to crash after installing the add-on on ctrl z going back in history mode so i don't know if it's a bug or uh, there is some kind of a conflict between add-ons but uh, you know um, that's that's what I've noticed. Anyway, uh, let me just uh, grab a cylinder here and let's just grab these two and go with hard up CM macro. Scale it a little bit and just drop some bevel. Cool. Let's drop some loops here, a loop here and one loop here. Okay, cool. So now if I wanted to rotate this uh, in Blender uh, by pressing R, you see that you will basically destroy the form of the object, right? can press GG and slide it, but uh, R doesn't work. So now this add-on does exactly that. So when you press Alt-R, you can see that I can now rotate this loop without changing the form. Now you can see near my cursor there is a, um, there's a text direct plane intersection. If I move my cursor, so if I'm going to start scrolling, I can change modes. And when I scroll and change mode, you can see that the way the line behaves is a little bit different like for example curves in here a little bit right um so you know you can change the mode of it if you want to reset this tool at any point press c which will reset it to uh, the default options and you can start you know adjusting it again so if i select these ones right and um, press alt r i can you know rotate them both at the same time uh, now the cool thing about this tool is that um it doesn't have to be a straight loop. So you can, for example, have something like this. And you can select them both, Alt R, and you can rotate them both. Now, when I'm going to scroll my mouse, you can see that the uh, the mode changes and the way the line uh, goes through that mesh changes as well. But, you know, this is pretty freaking cool. I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm enjoying this tool a lot. Okay. And this, you know, this offers a lot of. Uh, possibilities and interesting you know um, opens new avenues for modeling uh, for us anyway let's continue so now in addition to this one right what you can do is you can change the um, transformation here so if I go to machine tools power menu is switch from uh, global to let's say active and I'm going to select um, this loop in this way so select here and control select this one so uh, this one's going to become active right active element and i'm going to press alt r you can see that now i'm going to be um, pivoting around the active element right so if i'm going to select this one as well and alt r i'm going to you know uh, be, be basically rotating around the active element and then if i'm going to reset it to uh, let's say um, global again and Alt R, and it's back to normal behavior. You can also uh, change the cursor. So if I, for example, moved cursor in here and selected, you know, these, right? And uh, let's go with the cursor, Alt R, and I can rotate around the cursor. And now the behavior changes because uh, these get in bent as well. So that's a really interesting, you know, interesting tool. Now, in addition to all this, you can rotate faces, okay? So you can rotate faces, and let me just grab a cube to show you. So if I, you know, grab this cube here and try to rotate it in Blender, 
Uh, let's just reset this uh, pivot to global. You see that the shape will change, but if I go with uh, Alt R, I can actually by default rotate the face. Now, they're still gonna get confused when you're gonna have some loops going on in here, right? So, if I um, subdivide this face here, okay, and I'm gonna have more loops going on, right? This tool's gonna get confused. For example, if I select this loop now, because it's still a loop, right? You need to select a loop for this tool tool. So if I select this loop around here and try to rotate it, and the tool gonna get confused, right? The reason for it is that basically it doesn't know along which edges to slide because you got a lot of edges going across, right? Now, if I remove these two edges, okay, and select this loop again, right? And press, uh, press Alt R, but then press F to constrain it to face and X to constrain it to an axis. Now I can rotate it along the X axis uh, based on the face, um, one of these faces around, right? So it doesn't take edges into consideration, but uh, does it along the along the face. So it's a pretty cool, you know, pretty cool tool uh, to play with, especially when you when you want to, you know, um, move an edge at a certain, let's say. A degree because if I grab a cube right and move it in here and grab this face right and then I'm gonna press Alt R and hold control I can see that I'm at directly I'm in exactly 45 uh, degrees which means I can just you know extrude it upwards here right and scale it and Bob's your uncle. Another thing that you can do is straighten things up. So, for example, let's say we get a different cylinder. This one will not work really well. I mean, it will work, but you're not going to be able to see what I'm trying to show you. So, let's do something like this. Let's grab this cylinder and move it somewhere here, okay? And then we go into the loop here and we're going to, you know, kind of mismatch it, okay? So, just move this one up, this one down. Cool. And we get something like this, right? So now if I try to, you know, uh, zero this edge, right, uh, with Blender, uh, S, Z, zero, there you go, it's going to be a fucking pig. However, with this tool, what you can do is Alt R and then you can hold Shift and you can, you know, align it like this and then Alt R and let's say we're going to hold Shift and press Z and click and you can align it to... I know flat. So one more time, uh, uh, we're gonna go Alt R, right? And then you can press Z and Shift, and it's gonna straighten this loop. But then again, Alt R and then Shift and Z, and you align it to Z axis, so you're gonna flatten it. So this is really useful for you know, for managing uh, geo, especially on sub D on on sub D situations when you, let's say you have some kind of you know slightly. Uh, misaligned edges, right? So you got, you know, this kind of a situation going on. Let me just show you, right? Um, this is very often when you have bevels uh, or some other, you know, um, edges going on like that. So now what you can do is Alt R and hold Shift, and it's literally going to, you know, equalize them, right? So it's gonna, it's gonna make them simply straight, especially if you're on the Z axis. So you hold shift, you click, and then Alt R, and you know Shift Z, and boom, and you're back to straight mode. So this is extremely powerful tool. There, of course, are limitations to it, but it's extremely useful, and you know it was a tool that was needed for um, Blender hard surface, and not only. Well, that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the vid. Links to machine store in the video description. Thank you for watching. Catch you in the next video.